and Christian. Thank you very much for being on the podcast. Um, you're the creator, is that the word to describe it? Yeah. Sculptor of uh, the Spander installation, which we see in the background mm-hmm. there, which has become a iconic Perth installation and uh, set amongst sort of an interesting uh, architecture of Perth at the moment. And uh, Christian's back in again for some time so I've wanted to do a podcast with uh, Christian since it was installed some was it four or five years ago now three years ago three, three yeah 2016 yeah mm-hmm. and it's certainly been a, um, a talking point your installation for many different reasons and I thought today we'd like to have the opportunity to have a talk to you about some of the philosophies that drive not just to your art but your life and in in, you know, in particular with the Spanner installation itself, but also your other works as well. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to, uh, to having a chat. Um, on your website, it stated that you turn, um, that you use structural form to uh, tell spiritual teachings using contemporary um, technology. Mm-hmm. Um, what's, how did that come about? Like, was that something that you were always wanted to do that aspect, or is it something that evolved into the way it is now? Well, that's a very interesting and uh, kind of a long, sure. <laughs> a deep question with a long answer, I guess. We've got all the time um, in the world. So, uh, yeah. Thanks a lot for having me and for inviting me. By the way, uh, it's uh, it's really nice to have the opportunity to to talk with you. My pleasure. Um, so, um, it yeah, it I it isn't uh, what's stated on my website isn't exactly what I've always been doing my whole life no. uh, for sure for right. sure um, I have um, always uh, since I was a child been involved in, in art and, and, and making art mm-hmm. and, uh, that has been you know, throughout my life a consistent thread since I was very young right. um, and um, that that impetus to, to create and to, to make art has has been driven from many different places actually mm-hmm. um, and um, has taken on different forms mm-hmm. uh, and um, so yeah it's a, it, I'm just trying to sort of come to terms with how to sort of get to the present sure, sure. <laughs> because we don't want to get there straight away but it's important to have the yeah. to have some of the background I think as well definitely um, so, that good, yeah. so yeah, I mean, I could say that, you know, I just had this impetus when I was very young, this, 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 this desire. And I just yeah. love to make art all the time. You know, I love right. to make art when I was a kid. And, you know, I think a, most artists like have, mm. have that, they, they have this, yeah. this, um, it's intrinsic within them. this intrinsic thing yeah. that when they were a kid, they love to draw. Yeah. You know? and, and, and so it was, was true for me. And, um, so, you know, I was going through, I went through high school, um, here in Perth mm. and, um, in fact, all my teachers in high school and primary school they were always like the art teachers were always the ones that I was like you know looking to right um, yeah. they were models for me in, in sure. different ways um, certainly my, my primary school teacher Jane Hart mm-hmm. she was like yeah I just love love being in the art room you yeah. know, all the time and the same and my high school art teacher Michael O'Connell mm-hmm. who was very like he was a big inspiration to me um, mm-hmm. when I was you know 14 15 it was really a, you know I went to a to a boys' school here, and um, he was kind of like the the odd one out in that in that system, right. and I really could see, you know, I looked to sure. to that as like a, I could see there was a there was a sort of a freedom, yeah, you know, that, yeah. that he represented for me that yeah. I, I, I was I felt drawn to, you know, right. like that that sense of like determining one's own life, and, sure. and, and art being a way to sort of model like uh, sort of an, our own existence, mm. freedom. Yeah. So for freedom, model for freedom, you know? Right. Because I guess in that, so, that structure that it's quite determined for you, like it's deterministic in you, know, you've got these structures on these pathways, but him and, and, that, and using art showed you something way more exponential than right. was possible. Right. Yuri and I always just had that, I had that intuition that I just wanted to like to, to, to be in that space and there were other things around in that environment that didn't really like mm. feel it was jarring to me in a certain way and um so the art school the art room was definitely like a kind of a refuge in that, yeah. in that sense and, uh, nice. yeah so then michael encouraged me to to go on and study to uh, art and uh, so I, I went i went through um i went through like the classic 
I don't know whether it was classic or not, but I went through the art school system in, in yeah. very various different um, stages. So I went to, to school here, I went to an art school here, I went to an art school, to the School of Fine Art in Paris, and then later uh, to, the, to Columbia, to, did an MFA um, at Columbia in the art school there. Mm -hmm. um, so I went through, you know, like the, the classic kind of, um, I guess, contemporary art prescription for, um, for becoming a, a, an artist, I guess you right. could say, like whatever, yeah. whatever that means, <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. that means, or whatever that, that's required. A certified but, artist, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a certified artist, yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, like, um, and there's a certain kind of indoctrination also that happens, and that it's something I'd really like to, to discuss and unpack with you during this interview. This sure. is the, the different paradigms of, of, of making art and, and, yeah. and, um, good. and how we kind of like, how we're really taught uh, and what we really learn in those contexts mm. um, in a kind of a subliminal and a deeper way than yeah. what's actually being spoken about in, 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 in the courses and you know, like that. So, nice. um, so yeah, we, so I went, I did the, I did the art school thing and, um, did you enjoy could, it, the experience art school? Yeah, I did. I did. I really, I really did. Like, I remember the first day I was here at Curtin, uh, the first week, um, I really felt like, wow, this is mind blowing. You know, okay. yeah, <laughs> you know, cool. That's a good you thing. know, like it was yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, and I, I did feel lots very of much at home. Go do that, and they're like, "Oh no, what have I done?" Like in the first week of whatever it might be. So yeah, uh, I just I did uh, throughout, you know, my different sequences in art school. I did, um, I just had this sort of a certainty that this is what I want to be doing. You know, and like I, I guess the different systems and contexts were like. I mean, I guess I responded to them in different ways, mm -hmm. you know. Um, what I really loved in art school was, was the camaraderie and, and, mm -hmm. and also like the, the feeling of being around other artists and, yeah. and, and you know, that was really a wonderful thing and I continue, you know, I, I have great friends from art school mm -hmm. in, in the various different places I've been. Um, and you know, like art school here and art school in Paris, art school in, in New York, very, very, they're all very different experiences. You mm. know, it's very, um, it's an interesting environment. It's a very, uh, especially um, my latest experience at Columbia. It's a very, it was, it's a very particular kind of environment. Okay. It's quite a competitive atmosphere. It was quite a competitive atmosphere. I believe it continues to be. Right. Um, and the art schools, especially those art schools that are sort of like the the art schools in New York and London and. Um, you know, Yale and Royal Academy and all those schools, um, they're kind of like, they're kind of like entryways into the art world. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they're sort of part, they're in a certain sense, you're getting a kind of a passport in, into, a, into, a, into a world. Right. And at that time, certainly like, you know, when I was, when I was submitting my application and, and, and thinking about wanting to do that, that was, that was certainly like, you know, how I, perceived it as well mm. you know like in a, in, a, in a real way and honestly like I was um wanting to take that next step you know and like in, mm. in my in my career in my career what I thought my career was at that point um and uh and that seemed to be just the logical way to do that that's right. the, the sort of yeah. the next step in the in in the yeah in the ladder that I perceived was there sure yeah, yeah. um so um, yeah, so I went through art school and then I, I continued on and uh, I was in, living in New York and then, you know, at a certain point, shit hit the fan. <laughs> <laughs> a crisis. Yeah, 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 uh, in, in various different ways. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so there was a sort of like the beginning of a kind of a collapse of, of, of the house of cards. Okay, yeah, you know? yeah. I'm sure you're, you, I'm sure you can, I get the sense you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Um, yeah. Not everyone will, uh, but I think it's good, it's a good thing to, to talk about. And it's, it's an important sure. thing for me to also like illustrate in a, in a certain way, like how, how this work came to be and also like where, 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 where it at. comes from. Yeah, where it comes yeah. from, where yeah. I'm at now, yeah, because yeah. Um, at that time, you know, like when, when this work was, was made, um, you know, that was like 2014 and this this piece here like it really didn't come from like it wasn't an artist at the peak of his career okay you know interesting um it really rose from the ashes of of what i thought 
yeah. my life was at that time. Okay. It was very unexpected to me. Right. So your life at the time, or the my, my my life at the time, yeah, okay. my life at the time, and and uh, where I was at at that yeah. point, you know, I'd uh, sort of a, I'd gone through a kind of a collapse of of what my life was in New York, um, okay. with friends and partner and house and you yeah. know career and all, everything sort of like was falling apart at that at that point. Um, yeah. At the same time, though, I have to say, like, and you know, like in a certain way, maybe because of it. Other things entered my life too, so I, I was right. really becoming more aware of um, basic things like health, you know, like yeah, how to yeah, be okay, sure. I was beginning yeah. to practice yoga. I was beginning yeah. to like, you know, cultivate an, a, a level of awareness that I never had. Had that previously practice been in your life before, like a yoga? Not practice? at all. Okay. I had zero oh, right. interest in spirituality. Zero. But before. Bef- I can say the that time of this, but before. When I was at Columbia, I took a course with uh, in the religion department. Okay. Um, with Mark Taylor, it was called Nothing God Freedom. That was kind of like I, I was looking through the courses because at Columbia you can take like different courses in different mm. uh, um, departments. Yeah. I was looking through them all. And I was like, Wow, yeah, oh, that looks great. Okay, that was the, really the I think the first time for me that um, I had that. I, I started to bring that in a spirituality. Yeah. In, in, I mean, it's so hard to say. You know, where do, where does it yeah, begin I in know, the past? Right? Where does yeah. it begin? Like when we're born, before yeah, we're born, yeah. in the past life, and exactly. you know. Who knows? Yeah. Um, but it coincided really, with a but, time in your life where you're also, like a bit later on, I guess, where you're also, things have fallen apart. There was, yeah, for, again, for lack of a term, a crisis, which I don't mind that word. It's not as loaded as people make out. I don't think it can be very beneficial. But all this was sort of happening at the same stage, was it, that you were... Right. I went to, yeah, it was, it, it sort of happened, yeah, in it coincident, uh, you know, like congruently with, with that with bringing in like a certain level of awareness. And I think that's, you know, looking back at, at it, it's just sort of like the, the beginning of, of an awareness of the kind of structures that I'd built up around who I thought I was and mm. what I thought I was doing in the world just sort of began to sort of disintegrate in the face of the different kind of, uh, changes that were taking place mm. biologically uh you know because of my, my health was getting better mm. um mentally uh, you know i wasn't like um you know it's the beginning of that sort of the, it was the beginning phases of a curbing of a kind of a hedonism that okay. I really i was right. engaged in sure um, yeah. in, in various different ways the whole new york lifestyle yeah. thing yeah. yeah and um so at that point, you know, I was, you know, I was, I was also, I was pulling more, I was pulling back from the art world too, which I was really deeply involved in, you know, I, I was having shows and yeah. I'd begun to um, exhibit with, with um, Jeffrey Deitch and uh, I had a show there and different shows with, with, you know, I was just involved, you know, in, in mm. the New York art world thing mm. in, in whatever that, that was, you right. know, and whatever that is. Mm. Um, and, um, deeply involved in this idea and I think it's like a it's just a certain way of thinking that 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 one that I think a lot of artists have um, in in New York and especially in those big cities and especially having gone through through um, through art school it's just a certain way of um, We'll circle back around to to to, to crisis and, sure. and evolution, but yeah, I just yeah. want to think about uh, for a moment, like what what the paradigm really was that I was in at, at that time in New York, and I think it's I think it's helpful to, to people to um, to hear about um, yeah. to hear about because there are a lot of artists out there, uh, there are a lot of artists striving, there are a lot of artists. Um, wanting a certain thing in, the, in, in their career, in their life, and um, sometimes they're looking in the wrong places. And mm-hmm. that's certainly how I felt, you know, like at, at that time, you know, mm-hmm. as I began to really um, cultivate more of an awareness and um, an intuition about with my body and, um, and a health, I began to really see the places that I was holding on to identity. And, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, it's such a multi-layered process too, you know, that that process of really recognizing um, where we, where we, who we think we are, and 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 how that holds us back into really recognizing, like you know, the truth of, of our yeah, of our, it can be very limiting. Yeah. 
yeah. it can be very limiting. Yeah. 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 So, um, so art school has a, it, it definitely, it creates a certain kind of relationship to creativity. Um, it, it creates a certain kind of relationship to, to also even as deep, deep, even to our notion of immortality, you know, and, and that's something that I've been reflecting on, on, on lately as to like, what, what is it that drives this, what is it that drives this notion of success in, in the art world? And I don't know if you've, you've seen this around you or if you, you've experienced it yourself, but um, I certainly, um, experienced a lot myself and also in the people around around me when I was at, at art school is that um, sort of the the ultimate aim and, and, and of, of the ambitious artists that I was around and and I think the way that I perceived the uh, an art career at that time was sort of to position oneself in relation to art history such that one would be remembered forever. Right, yeah. If I want to be really sure. like, you know, yeah. basic and very honest about it. Yeah, a legacy. Yeah, yeah. so this, this is like, a, this, is, this is an idea of, um, we want to be immortal. Sure. And everyone wants that actually. Yeah. And, and it's interesting because, um, it's sort of like a, it's it's. There's a truth to that. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been reflecting on. You know, I've been reflecting on this a lot lately. And, um, there's now. a truth to that, like to that, just in the fact that, in that desire, that desire to to be to 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 want to be, especially for artists, I think it, it exists. This desire for 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 immortality and the, the way that we perceive it, especially in, 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 in bigger cities and when you're really in that, in that world, in the contemporary art world, we, there is this perception that in order to um, really succeed as an artist, one might, you know, the, the, sort of the pinnacle, the peak of the art career is like a, a show at MoMA, yeah, right. a, a gallery in Chelsea, like you, you mentioned before, who's gonna like <laughs> represent you, um, a powerful gallery, sure. hopefully. Yeah. Um, and entry into the canon of art, art of art history, right. you know? and um, yeah. and that's the, the the drive there is a drive for immortality. Yeah. But the problem is that the way that we're it's a very immature, childish, cartoon like way of perceiving immortality. And the thing is, sure. that it does I think point to a real um, a truth. It points to truth actually. It points to the truth that of 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 our inherent of our inherent immortality, actually, mm. of of the of what is really inherently eternal within wow. us, you know, and and mm. it's just that like we've get we get certain things, and I certainly had this, you know, certain ways of perceiving how to how to like how to abide in that, mm. and and the art school teaches a certain paradigm, a certain step, and a certain a certain uh, kind of a, a path and it sketches out a kind of a ladder for that happening mm -hmm. um, but that's it's a it's it's a mind created mm -hmm. um, it comes from it comes from a certain kind of conditioning of the mind right. uh, and it comes from also a certain kind of um, it comes from a limited conception of, of what what mortality is and what 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 truth is and what 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 really what what the truth of our being really is and, mm. and, and that's something that I think can only be uncovered by the by the deconditioning um, process the destructive process actually of, of uncovering who we truly are sure. and, and, um, it's like a mini death it's really. it is yeah. it is yeah yeah and anyone who's experienced it knows and it's and it's uh, um, so it's the yeah it's I think it's important to talk about like this this different paradigm and, and the art the art school paradigm the mm. art the contemporary art paradigm because it's mm. um, it's there's a lot of I think healing that needs to be done 
in, in that in that world and, and for a lot of artists who, who misperceive where they're going and why right you know? okay. so um, based a lot of a lot on usually generally their tertiary experiences I think so and also just and just culture it, yeah yeah that's right art culture, culture. Art, yeah. not only that even yeah. if you didn't go to art school even if yeah. you've watched the movie Basquiat or if you've watched you know like <laughs> any any kind of like if you opened up any art history book mm. you know like you have that like you're faced with that um, mm. with that delusion in a way yeah. that that's what there is to be striving that's right. what there is to to gain and, and that's why yeah. um, we're doing that um, so so we during this time when this is you were in this paradigm were you aware of the limiting aspects of that or were you aware that something was limited within you or was it until afterwards you know, no I was absolutely to, unaware of that yeah. um, you didn't have like, it's sort of like at the back of your mind that hang on something well something's not quite right here or? yeah probably probably like some something yeah that's interesting question the thing is that i think at that that point i was so deeply immersed right in the narrative sure a believer Mm. in the narrative um and at a certain point along in the narrative where there was a, a certain level of of success that um, meant I didn't have to look at it. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> until, you know, <laughs> you know, until stuff starts to fall apart, you know, and then, and then just by virtue of those structures crumbling and the cracks starting to appear, then, you know, I started to seek something. So it's a slow process, you know, mm. and I went through, it really started off actually for me in that sense, just health cultivation and postural yoga. Okay. It was like, yeah. you know. You knew something, you had to do something about your health. Actually, I, I was having a, yeah, I was, it was uh, actually asked with my, my girlfriend at the time, you know, I was like, I can't concentrate, I can't, I can't concentrate. She's like, you should try yeah. yoga. There was a yoga studio, <laughs> yeah, right. like next to me, next door to where I lived in Brooklyn. And uh, I just, you know, I just started going and I was, as soon as I started that practice um i really had this the first i remember the first time i went there i was like wow yeah there's something here mm-hmm. you know there's something here and then it's like you know I, I at the same time i recognized you know in that at that point that there was also this recognition that that's not all there is you know i could i had that sense mm-hmm. that this is i get that this is pointing to something deeper sure it's, it's still like not the whole picture but i yeah. could feel that it was okay this is like yeah this it's is like the really tip of the iceberg like it's something you can see and feel but there's like it's still like a massive back part of that as well that yeah, right gives you an inkling about yeah yeah you just get yeah. this kind of a flavor yeah of, exactly. tr- of something yeah of, of a of a of a truth and it was the first time you know too that i'd really been in a context where where people were um talking about truth you know yeah, nice. and uh and that was a big shock for me because the other thing in art school is that you're you 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 know you're really introduced to throughout my whole education this notion of uh pluralism and postmodernity. Okay. and um and i remember writing an assignment in, in first year in, at, at university and uh, you know i had to define postmodernism and, and why it's why we have postmodernism today in, in the art world you know? and um and that you know that of course that's a doctrine that espouses that there is no truth there is no ultimate truth mm. all we have is is a is a certain soup of, of relativity mm. and um and uh you know I, I bought that because you know i wanted to be a good student and i also wanted mm. to know what was you know like i want to get good grades too i yeah. wanted to know what was like you know, I was being introduced to the art, to, to the discourse sure. of, our, of, of, of our history. Indoctrinated into it. In, in certain way, yeah. indoctrinated. Now I, have, now I do perceive it as indoctrination, for sure. Um, and, you know, so it was a shock to me to, to be in this context now where people were talking about, like, ultimate truth and, and, and the absolute. And, you know, because, um, yeah, it was just not really something that was in my awareness. And, um, mm. and it's something that 
it's it's so deeply ingrained. Mm. It was a deeply ingrained for me at that time. Mm. Um, so it was refreshing too because I felt, yeah. wow, okay, this is this is different. It's like a truth is like an elixir, isn't it? When you experience it to its fullest ability or as full as anyone can do it, it's like a yeah, it's like a, a something that you you uh, given that really gives you a perspective on where you're at as a human being and what you want from your life. I think yeah, and it's and it's really shown I think by individuals who, who carry that within themselves and you know yeah. that's why I have so much gratitude to the teachers that I've had and the people mm. I've seen because it really is it's something that's transmitted in in the presence of someone who's actually begun to actually live that. Yeah. You know, and, and for me, that's what was lacking in the spirituality that I perceived, you know, growing up in high school. And that's why I think I had a real, like, an aversion to it. I'd never really... Yeah. You did too. Yeah. 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 It's, it's weird, isn't it, when I think about, like, um, you know, like singing hymns in, in, in high school and that stuff and doing the nativity scene in primary school and stuff. And, you know, like being deeply around it all the time, but not having sure. any kind of living vitality vi vital experience to that um, yeah you know yeah and um and also prejudices i guess to like what you describe as a new age movement and the new age spiritual movement like, <laughs> that's it up, i think some of these like well that's dudes going around with ponytails hitting on women and like that's it that's it hair, i'm just like oh, it's like oh, that's something not quite right about that but it was just my it's just my judgment it was just all my prejudices and then once you if then you if if uh, life so dictates or you feel like a uh, compelled to start really investigating that world yourself, you understand that, yeah, actually the real ones, the ones that are actually doing the real work, they are in their truth and they are in their authenticity and they're just really amazing people to be around, you know? So, exactly. Yeah. It's, so, it's so interesting how, like, we judge the container. I was just speaking yeah. to this about this to a friend of mine. We can't taste the wine because we judge the vessel. It's not, yeah, it's you know, you, you, you yeah. can't like, because you get yeah. caught up in like, no, that's not quite right. Or, you yeah. know, like, you know, and, and there, is a, there is a real hypocrisy, you know, that, sure. that, that, that is obviously there in spiritual communities everywhere and spiritual, mm. you know, and in, in, in everyone, in everywhere. Yeah. And, um, and I think particularly since it becomes particularly sensitive when people are um, really directly engaged in, in, in the transmission of truth and, and to mm. see hypocrisy in that context mm. is really quite um, off-putting for is. people. Yeah. For, you know. yeah. So, um, yeah, this, uh, that's funny. You also had that deeper version. And here we are yeah, talking yeah. about God and truth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so um, there was a there was a, quite a, like a, a, a profound shift for me um, that, you know, I should, should mention is it was a certain point, you know, I was really like, I had been practicing yoga for a while and, um, and uh, I was involved in, in that world and going less and less, you know, like on benders out to openings, um, you know, and uh, becoming more just quiet, you know, actually. And, uh, and, and, uh, and at a certain point, uh, I had this, um, I, um, I met a teacher, uh, Harish, who, who you might know too. Um, he came to New York and um, he gave a workshop, like a, a weekend. And it, it's something really very deeply, I, I, there was a very deep shift um, that, that happened uh, for me at that point. And uh, mm -hmm. um, being, being with him and... Um, In what it way? Was, How would you describe it? Was it was just, I just sort of, it's hard, it's hard to describe. It was just like, a, it was just a sort of a, it was a deep recognition, you know, it was a recognition of like, uh, a feeling of recognition mm -hmm. that like, of really, who, who I am in a really deeper way. Right. And, and also a simultaneously, like I could, there was a, being, being with him and being with the teachings, there was such a, there was such a truth and an honesty um, there and, and uh, an integrity that it was really like, um, it was kind of an awesome thing for me to like, mm -hmm. come into contact with. And um, at that point, and it, I could see, really clearly why I was suffering 
mm. you know um I could really, I really like saw it like really clearly. Right. Why, why I was, why I was where I was at, and why right. I was really like uh, suffering and. and uh, so he you know, assisted in changing your lens of perception. It definitely, this it was the beginning. It was really like the, it was the beginning of, of a deep, very deep change, and, and mm. I could, and it was also like a, a, a real. Uh, it was an introduction to Shaiva Tantra, to the to the to the real yoga, the real Shaiva yoga. Mm that I, I, I realized at that point that I'd be looking for, right. you know, that I, I'd tasted. Because yep. I was going to, um, there was an Anyasara yoga school actually that I was going, uh, going to. And um, mm -hmm. all these teachers of course have like Kashmir Shaivism deeply actually um, um, in, 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 in what they teach. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's actually embedded in there. And I, get, I, I realized that, you know, after having contact with Harish that I, I, taste, I had a taste of that through the teachers that I'd been mm -hmm. practicing with and, and mm -hmm. you know, and a really full-on dose of it um, right. with, with, with Harish. Sure. So, you know, it wasn't like all, all like um, love and, and bliss. It was really like also, you know, like, wow, I, like this, I actually like, stuff really like started to get kind of crazy for me at that, at that point. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I really pulled back. I actually could not, it was like, I, my, my world had been like molded into this round thing and, and yeah. everything else looked square and I just, it, nothing nothing fit you sure know? so it was like a the often often used term ego was sort of had to really uh, had to come to grips with itself and, and what it was experiencing and wanting out of life as well yeah and i think it's also like that there's a certain shift that happens and then it takes a while for all the circumstances around you to kind of like yeah. reshape and remold and like yeah. to catch up you know it and, does. Like, and, and it needs to be integrated which takes a well that's a it good while that's yeah. it it's like it, everything is about integration and I certainly was not at that point of integration then it was really yeah. I was really deep in the dissolution phase I'm at the beginning of the dissolution phase really and yeah I actually took a retreat uh, I was like I was in my apartment in New York I was just like I don't know I don't know what to do you know all I could do actually after after that was really to, to read uh, Shaiva Tantra mm -hmm. scriptures and the mm -hmm. teachings that's all I wanted to do Right, that was I just I couldn't do anything else. Just immerse yourself. I that. just yeah, like I couldn't work. I couldn't like go out. I could, that's yeah. all I wanted to do, you know. And, uh, and I thought, okay, like, so I took a retreat in a nursery, mm -hmm. uh, in upstate, mm -hmm. upstate New York, mm -hmm. um, and um, that was actually really amazing to to do that. Mm -hmm. It was I was there for um, I was there for about nine months and. Um, and it was really wonderful time to mm. really go very deep yeah. uh, with, with the practices that, yeah. um, that I've been given and, um, and to really go deep with the, um, you know, with that process of mm. pulling back from the limiting conceptions that I'd had. Because it, it, it really did require, for me anyway, some people it's probably a lot simpler, but for me it really did require like a, a kind of a <clears throat> a retreat mm -hmm. I, I had to like let a lot die to really like because yep. I I think what I really realized when I was with um, with Harish and, and, and after that uh, that experience is that I really want a deep deep transformation mm -hmm. like the fire was just like I was so dried out I think that time I just everything just caught fire you mm -hmm. know, just, I was just like the whole thing went up in flames that's good, that's good analogy. <laughs> yeah know? yeah but those I was, flames are what then motivated you or gave you the energy to really... Yeah, I guess, well, it really, it didn't give me the energy to continue on with my art career at that point. Right. It, it actually made me really question what I was doing. And, yep. uh, and I actually thought at that point that I might not make art again. Okay. Because I saw, you know, so many different ways that I was, you know, that I felt were problematic with the yeah. way I was relating to to my creativity, creativity and, yeah. and the way I could perceive it. So the only way I just thought like... The thing, the other thing is that like I'd spent so much of my life and time and energy trying to be somebody, you know, mm. and I just I had to learn how to like be no one and, and just to be mm. like, just to not strive anymore. That's a scary you know, like, thing, though, right? It was it was really yeah, it was really scary for me. Yeah. It was really scary because uh, you know, yeah, yeah, um, it's scary because it's um, 
it's a deep it's a deep kind of a surrender and, and uh, you know I just I just had to trust in a certain process and and really like what helped me to trust were the, were the teachings the teachers at that time you know Harish and Dharma Bodhi who was also a teacher of mine at that time it was the their example that really like kept me going yeah the gave life, you a framework gave me some framework yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so um and I worked as a cook, so I worked as a cook there at, um, at, at the ashram. Nice. Which is amazing. It's really, yeah. really a really beautiful thing to do. So to employ your creativity <laughs> in something. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It was like, okay, creative enough, but, uh, yeah. but not, um, not involving um, my, um, my, my identity as an artist. Sure, you know? sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, so yeah. Um, so that at, the, at that point also <clears throat> I, after that experience I think I was really I'd retreated for quite a while and, and um, I think my family at that point were like getting a bit concerned okay yeah, yeah. which tends to happen right when families they see their son or daughter or you know, some loved ones start to live life a little bit differently and look at life a different way and have these different kind of conversations and it can be a little bit of fear I think from those family members that you know this person is not following that path that's been set in front of them and, yeah know. yeah it's like Christian you went to you know you went to this um, Ivy League school what are you doing yeah. you're, in the, you're in the woods you know? yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was in the woods sure. <laughs> literally and figuratively yeah um, but uh yeah, there were so many different layers to the process. And, you know, I actually went back to New York at that point. And, um, what year was this? Uh, this was like 2013. Okay, yeah. And then, um, then at, at, uh, at that point too, I think it was really going back to New York, not really quite ready for the reintegration process. Yeah. And I sort of like, I had this other, another experience of really like disintegration there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, um, my brother was like, you know, you've got to come back to Australia. You're not, it's not, you know, you're not well. And I wasn't, I, I wasn't well. Right. I was really unwell at that point, in my mind and also, you know, yeah. trying to like, still trying to reintegrate basically at that point. Sure. And so that, at that point, you know, he flew me back to Australia, mm -hmm. to, to Melbourne. I stayed with him for a while. Yeah. And, um, and uh, yeah, I was very, um, at that point, uh, there was, you know, like further, further sort of peeling away of the identity, pro you know, the identity dissolution process at that point too. Yeah. I realized, you know, even like moving away from New York and, and being flown back to, 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 um, to Melbourne, you know, and I really, I was, I wasn't in a good way then. It was really like sort of a wounded animal coming back. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, I'm so very grateful to my family for, for, for the help they provided at that point. Mm. And, um, but you know, like leaving New York was also really hard. Mm. It wasn't until I left that I realized I had this whole New York artist identity. Right, okay. Then sure. built up. Yeah. It wasn't until I left that I could see it. The persona. The persona, yeah. you know, and it's an attractive persona. I think it's a lot of like artists in, in New York get, get drawn to that. And, yeah. you know, because, you know, there's all sorts of associations that can come along with that. And yeah. We can like hold on to that as like a, as a thing, which can be used to define us. Of course, it's like, it's very, 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 very temporary. Right. <laughs> very temporal and very limited. Right. Um, so yeah and then so i was in i was in melbourne at the time that um a friend said you know you should apply for this for okay. this project yep. and i was like you know i don't know if i am ready yet but it seems it seemed to me that it just it just came the call was there right um i felt the call back to to to, to doing to yeah. making I wasn't like looking for it, you know, I, I certainly wasn't in a place where I felt I could be there, be back, th you know, I, I was, I was just in deep in this process of being in, in, in the death, in the kind of a death, right. you know, sure. <laughs> in the death, yeah, yeah. but 
something uh, really, there was, a, there was the light calling me and, and there was something that, that was there that yeah. said to me, you should do this. Yeah. So that and, death uh, was really creating space for this new thing to come through and it's this new philosophy around life and your art as well. I think so, yeah. I think that that's really what was happening. It was also like we have, I had this sort of, I think what I could see now is that I had this just limited idea of what my potential was. That, that, yeah, that yeah. too, you know, like it's like you have this, I had this, um, I guess all that was being said was that like what you think you have to do in this life and, and what you think you're here for is, is, is not really what you're here for. Right. And I, you just, I, you know, I was, I held on to that a lot. Sure. You know, and it was, and this, the pain comes from not being able to let go of that, you know. And, yeah. and, uh, and it's just that, that what I could perceive was limited and, and, yeah. and really like what there was is, is, was far, was far beyond what I could perceive. Right. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, of course, it's like, it's still not perceptible. It's not that I have an mm. idea of where I'm going or what I'm supposed to be doing mm. exactly. But, you know, mm. but um, I was held in by certain limited conceptions of what I thought um, mm. I had to do and what I thought I, I, I could be as an artist and what I, what I thought um, art was. You know, and, mm. and when... Yeah, so when I got this project, um, when, when I was applying for that, it really like, it came through very, very quickly, actually. Very quickly. The concept for it? The concept. Yeah. The, you know, I, I have, you know, I had skills, you know, right. 3D modeling skills, yeah. which I've been developing for a long time sure. as an artist, you know. So I had those like skills were like, they were there, yeah. you know, so, so this, the idea and, and, and the form, it came through really quite fast actually um, and you know I submitted the proposal and um, and it got accepted uh, you know it was a, it was a competition um, and um, and it, yeah it, it went through to the to the phase to the to the last phase and then it was accepted and um, and then um, there was a long process a long period of time where it was being you know being made yeah, right. So it was really like a, it was the beginning of a new kind of a new way for me to approach mm. creativity. And, yeah. and being, and, um, it also allowed me a lot of time and space to really um, to go deep again into retreat. I actually took a retreat here while I was making this. I was okay. on, I pretty much I went on another retreat basically for about a year yeah. um, while this was being made. Right. Okay. Um, and at that point, I had different practices from 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 Dhamma Modi, yep. you know, another teacher of mine, and um, I really went deep with those practices mm. while, while while this was being made. Mm. Um, and um, I started also to become uh, really. It afforded me the, this, this kind of a space to really to just sort of uh, to kind of rest, <clears throat> to rest, and to really. Um, to allow a sort of a to allow a sort of a spontaneity mm. to just also to, to, to discover what could actually what could really emerge mm. what wants to come out what wants to really what wants to be shown in a way mm. you know and like um, what wants to come through yeah what wants to come through and and um, and I think also like I could, I had a sort of a, it allowed me kind of a space to really begin to perceive like where that, like where that will to create was coming from and to mm. really be very careful mm. and intentional sure. about um, what was coming, what was coming through me and why. Yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to take a bit of a glass of water. Please do, yeah, yeah. Um, do you want, too, yeah, do you want some of this? Yeah, I will actually, yeah. That's this right. has got electrolytes in it. Oh, nice. So it tastes a little different. That's all right, that's good. Yeah. 
bit of replenishing for the body. Exactly. But it's interesting that you say that, like, at the stage you're at in your life when this was created, like, to me, like, I, I envisioned, like, as you have been at your peak when you created this, because, and then I guess in a way you were, like, well, you're in a space of novelty, I guess, but, like, when I, when I first saw this, it reminded me of um, the same feeling I got when I saw the flower of life for the first time, the, that sacred geometric structure. Um, that's, that's the flower of life there. Oh, yeah. And um, it was like this aesthetic to it that I saw that was like, it was harmony. That's the only way to describe it. It was like this pure harmony. And that's the feeling I got when I saw this for the first time oh, as well. That, yeah, there's, there's a harmony there. There's something that's in, in its truth and in nature and it's in its truth. And um, yeah, it was just an amazing element to have in, in Perth, you know, this little big country town where we're so yeah. dominated by oil and gas and, you know, money and fluctuating economy and you know extracting resources you know it's um to have something like this installed here was like it was also i think for me also it was also like a recognition of what's going on in perth as well like this underlying movement that's occurring here as well that's perhaps as a um, balance to the, the capital mining oil and gas industry to have here where there is like a, a groundswell of like a um, a spiritual movement, I guess, that, that, it is, yeah. that is happening with these communities that are forming in Perth. Yeah. And um, it, I felt this is like a representation of a changing time in Perth. Yeah, was, yeah that's a very interesting observation. You know, somehow I can't sort of distinguish between my own experiences and what I'm beginning to see because of like how the changes that are taking place or the yeah. things that are inherent in, in the right. changes that are taking place here. But yeah, yeah. I certainly see it a lot more too. Yeah, I know. Perth is an amazing place actually for health cultivation for spirituality and it yeah. has incredible beauty but at the same time as you say like we're living in a city that's been built on the extraction of, of, of resources of money yeah. resources and, uh, yeah it's beautiful beautiful what you said um, about, about harmony and um, it's interesting it's been such an amazing process to and such an amazing privilege you know to, 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 to create something like this yeah so um, can you talk and, a little bit about the what because there's many, like, depending on which articles you read, I found it interesting how, okay. like, if you read, like, a mainstream media article, it described it as, like, um, a description of, like, the ripples of the water, <laughs> and, you know, which, you know, which it okay. can be too. Yep. But uh, not many of them really went into, like, the, um, the spiritual context of, of that, of your design as well. So can you, yeah, so can you give a bit of that's interesting. background to that? I, I thought that was interesting. Abs yeah. Yes, yeah. it's a very... That people probably weren't quite ready yet in mainstream, very mainstream media to grasp what it is that this is right yeah. right that's a very interesting observation that you could see that uh and uh i'm very aware of it i was very aware also going into this um this project that that context for the work and and the the sort of the essence of the work was maybe not necessarily something that could or should be divulged right in the beginning mm -hmm. sure there need to be some ground need to be some yeah. yeah there needs to be the the depths of like uh, where it came from and and what really i think the potential of a form like this is 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 something that like uh, it sort of was baby steps to sort of like to allow that to come out and, sure. and i was careful with how I, you know yeah. how i um talked about it in the media before and right. after the commission and all that so that's uh, yeah. there are different like you know yeah. Be different people, different things will say. Different people will say different things for sure. Sure. Um, the title was always was always there, and that was always something that I was very very clear about. That's Spanda. Spanda. Yeah. So the title Which is a of the work is philosophy. Right. Yeah. yeah. So the title of is yes, it's Spanda. Spanda. Um, Spanda is um, it's a beautiful, such a beautiful word. It's like it's for, it yeah. comes from the Shaiva tradition. Okay. Um, and it's um, so in, in the Shaiva tradition, uh, there is basically that reality and um, is, is the play between, um, between a divine immanence and, and, and divine transcendence. Okay. So there is, this, there is this unity between the manifest world that we can see and, and the unmanifest world, which is the ground. Um, and for the Shaivas is, is consciousness right. and um, between those two there is like a they're in union 
and they're like they're pulsating mm-hmm. actually it's dynamic it's this process mm-hmm. of this process of, 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 of manifestation mm-hmm. is is a dynamic process mm-hmm. and um, and it's something that occurs in every moment everywhere mm-hmm. and it's like uh, and it's a vibration it's it's beautifully it's beautiful beautifully described in, in, in the Spanda Karakas and, and in the different scriptures in, in the Shaiva tradition is, mm-hmm. um, is this 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 vibration of consciousness that wants to manifest actually that mm-hmm. wants to like bring 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 itself into being so it can experience, experience itself, itself yeah you know yeah. so um which is an amazing thing to think about it is an amazing yeah, thing to think and about and that, yeah. and you know not only to think about to to experience you know and that's really what well, it's we about. are experiencing it, aren't we? that's you it and I in this that's present it moment. Yeah, that's it every moment yeah yeah and that's what the yogis brought to us is is the teachings and the path to that experience and right. and and that's you know in my own kind of a way i wanted to create something not with it like an inherent you know not an image not an inherent meaning but something that would provide an experience sure you know and an experience of of um of that yeah to a certain to whatever level i can you know and, and to whatever level people can also approach it and bring, bring yeah. to it you know and um <clears throat> what i <clears throat> wanted to do as well is to really recognize that um, Everyone is everyone in their own way is, is seeking a kind of a unity, you know, mm-hmm. and, and um, to different degrees of, of success, mm-hmm. to different degrees of um, in different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, but everyone, everyone is is seeking that, no matter, no matter what. That, that's that's how, that's what I see now, and, uh, yeah. and I wanted to get to, wanted to really to create a form which would. Which would facilitate that, mm-hmm. and, um, facilitate that kind of an experience of unity. And, sure. um, that's why is the, there's that you know, the, the same the same the same ring is actually just used exponentially. It's the mm-hmm. same. It's the same exponential form moving inwards and outwards. And, um, yeah. So you have this sort of a tangible like uh, feeling of the whole being contained with all the parts. And um, yeah, I mean it's. It, you know, it's abstract enough too for people not to have to know that yeah. or know anything about it. Really, where I really wanted to create a form. This is a, this is a, this is not um, sacred art, you know, which is what also like something I'm very deeply involved in. Mm. It's not traditional sacred art. It's public art, yep. and uh, and and so I wanted to create a form that was really accessible. They didn't have cultural. I mean, of course, there's this cultural baggage. It's minimalism, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, like. Sure. But really, for, for that to be mm. like. Um, as for people to be able to come to it, you know, mm. in a way that wasn't like loaded, yep. that they could really just have that pure, pure important, right? It's very important, especially for so, somewhere yeah. like Perth. Definitely, yeah. definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's it's such an amazing process too to see like how it's sort of a, an interesting experiment for me in mm. a way to see what what could happen if we had a form like this. Right. In the city, what, what, yeah. how would it, how would something like that, with a kind of a, a vibration like that, how could it, how could it resonate, how could it affect, you know, mm. everything around it? Sure. Um, Which is what form does do, can do. I that's mean, it. You look at some of the amazing uh, architecture, especially with that, that comes from more of a deeper philosophy and understanding going back to Greek times especially where they use things like the golden mean you know in their temples and you know through Egyptian societies as well you know to understand that form can even if the person that is around that form doesn't understand the message behind it just the fact that it's in in their that presence of that form that, that holds a harmony that will somehow affect that person you know whether you feel at peace or at ease or whatever you may whatever may come from it I think it has a, a, I mean, in landscape architecture, we call it geomancy. So it's things mm. like feng shui, you know, where you can adapt the built environment or the environment to form some sort of harmony. And, and then we've got to be careful also that our ego is a place in, if yeah. we can try to take ego out of as much as it can. So this goes through what you were speaking to earlier about letting something come through you that isn't uh, influenced by your ego or some sort of lack or some sort of insecurity but rather okay. something that's in truth 
Yeah. But it's a hard thing to do. And I think, you know, again, going back to what you were speaking to before about having some sort of understanding of your own mortality and that you are going to die, that death is a thing, understanding that, even experiencing a, a type of mini death um, through whatever form that may be, it holds huge potency to be able to create something that's meaningful and, and yeah. love-based. Absolutely, and in harmony with everything around it. That's really mm. like the only, only way it can be created. If there is a harmony within oneself, mm. if we're not cultivating that, then everything that we're creating and everything that we're doing is is, is sort of like is passing through the lens of our conditioning and, and it's yeah. conditioning others. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Isn't it? It's, yeah. uh, that's why I think as artists we have to be incredibly... It's... Um, there's a responsibility, I think, you know, to, mm. to, to, to bring it out. So it's very interesting what you say also about that everything, everything does affect everything else, of course. Like everything you put out, everything, all these objects around us there that have a certain mm. kind of a vibration. Yeah, even this conversation, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so three years on from the installation and the things that you experienced, like how, how do you feel about this, this installation now? And like, especially coming back to Perth after some time I always I love coming back here. I love seeing how people interact with it. Mm. I love seeing um, there is a certain kind of a gesture that people have. They sort of like hold up their hands, and it's like this kind of thing. Yeah, be like the Vitruvian man. Yeah, they, they do that. Vitruvian you see man. them. People do that, and yeah. it's not like you, people do it like over and over. You know, yeah. it's it's fascinating to me. It's like wow, this is it creates a kind of a mudra. Yeah, you know, like it creates yeah. a kind of it's a it's very very fascinating. It's like they're in like a space. Like they're in a, yeah. a, in a space of place and time where they're just, without even, I guess they probably might even know where they can just, it's like a little portal. Or something, <laughs> that's, like, that's it. Yeah, yeah it's just that's little, it. That's it. Yeah, like where they can experience that and just yeah. perhaps feel something they've never felt before. You know? Yeah. It's yes. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That just makes my day is whenever I see that. Yeah. yeah it's, it's an amazing thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and how does that tie around to then also your life as it was then and, and compared to now oh well you know like I after I I'd made this piece and um, I it sort of afforded me a lot of some time the time to travel uh, and I, I went actually I traveled for about for about a year and a half or two years or so mm-hmm. in India Nepal um, Thailand I was just I went to study with, with, with different teachers I've been sort of really itching and waiting to do that mm. um, so as soon as I, I could I, I started that that process and um, yeah and I, I went I studied with different teachers in the Shaiva tradition and, and um, I also went to Nepal and studied the sacred art of Nepal which I've become very deeply invested in um, so yeah I've become um, I've started a sort of a very private, for now anyway, uh, practice of sacred art, um, which is which is um, which is in this specific tradition. Mm-hmm. Um, sculpture. Yeah, sculpture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I've been doing that for like for four or five years now. Yeah. Um, but I have, it's not really something that I've I've shown at all. Yeah. You've got um, some stuff up on your website there, right? Like different I, deities and yeah. things like yeah. Yeah. I have a few. Yeah. 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 Check so it, I'll put a link in here below. Yeah, check out Christian's website. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing stuff. <laughs> I just recently also did another public sculpture um, in in China, which is it seems yeah. like that that's sort of something that's becoming more and more of a reality is the, the, okay. the public sculpture, which I find very interesting. I sort of have this. You didn't think you'd be going in that direction? Um, well, it's not that. I guess it's like uh, I find it. Well, I did do I did do public art, and I did a couple of pieces in in New York, and then. Okay. Um, and then I did this, this the other piece here with Marcus Cannon, uh, the piece at St George's Cathedral. So I was kind of beginning. Oh, right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So um, I think it's just an interesting uh, process to be interfacing with the public in that way. Yeah. To, be, to have like to make things that have that real effect. Sure. You know? yeah. um, so that, um, but at the same time, I'm also involved in, in, in the esoteric, you know, esoteric tradition and, and the sacred art, which is. Not something necessarily that everyone can really, or be attracted to, or, or interested in. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very specific language, mm-hmm. but uh, this introduction to sacred art is something that's really um, 
and and the immersion in sacred art that I've been trying, that I've been uh, involved in is something that's really been very very interesting for me also as someone who's worked in the contemporary art world yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's a com another completely different kind of a paradigm sure you okay know? yeah um yeah and in what way well the thank you um yeah, the um, it's just it kind of gets back to what we were talking about, you know, about um, about ego and creativity, and it, it's really great, I think, to get to the core of this because this is really like I think where it's at. <laughs> you know, it's like uh, like. Where where is you know where is creativity and mm. where, where where is our where is our place where is mm. our as artists where is our where do we locate where do we locate creativity and how do we behave in mm. relation to it mm -hmm. that that's something that I've become more aware of I think through practicing in a tradition in the sacred art tradition is mm. is that, that the the point is really not to be um, at the avant-garde and um, the point is not to be you know pushing through and making new um, inventing reinventing the wheel mm. which is which is to be seen as the goal of 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 of, uh, in, of contemporary art is right. really to be yeah. you know to be at the uh, there, there is this notion of the avant-garde you know which, sure. which is like literally you know it's like in a military sense, is to be at the front of yeah. the on of the, the army line. on the yeah. front line, you yeah. know. And there is this there is this notion that uh, to be a contemporary artist, you need to be breaking, having this break with tradition and mm. forging a path ahead, right. you know. Sure. And um, that's not the that's not the paradigm of of, mm. of sacred. Of, of and when I say sacred art, it's not like a, it's not an objective thing. It's just like okay. it's sort of a, a, a denotation of a certain kind of a paradigm, which is distinct from from what we have now, in, in from what we have since I'd say World War One. Okay. Um, right. You know, and, and also even in pre previous to that, I guess. Mm -hmm. Really, it's like the, the sacred artists are the, are the artists who built the pyramids, the mm -hmm. artists who you know have the Mayan temples, mm -hmm. the artists who've created the, the sacred art of India and Nepal and, mm -hmm. and Asia. Sure. Who 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 work um, for a higher goal, mm. you know, for a higher for, for 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 a higher purpose than their own, mm. than their own, um, than their own self interests. Right. Yeah. And 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 tradition, and you know, is 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 a place for the ego to rest. Actually, I never really got that at art school. I was always like, ah, oh, you know, tradition. <laughs> you know, you gotta like, you know. Oh, you know that are like, you know, that are like something new, you know, like the tradition I, st I perceive, see now, it's just like, it's this incredible, it's incredible actually to, 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 to be able to contribute to, to a tradition, to be able to rest into a tradition. Yeah. And um, to be able to also, to, to really recognize the, the role that that, that that can play. Yeah. Um, and um, and how I mean it's all like to to, to practice art as as a, as a spiritual to have art as a spiritual practice is really to to allow the process of creativity to contribute to the dissolution of your limited conceptions of who you are and to really to allow the process itself to to unveil, you know, to mm. unveil more and more of, of, of who you truly are and, and who, um, and, and what, and what reality really is. And that, that's how I perceive my, my practice now. It's really, it's, it's a process. And if art isn't a process, if, if the process itself, you know, if the process of, of creating art, if, if being in the process of creating art, if being in that moment you know, in that time, in that space is not, you know, 
su su sufficient if, if we're striving towards any ul ulterior goal um, then um, we're not really being with the true process of creativity you know? mm -hmm. and, and the other thing to say also is that about the, just want to get back to you know that the, this idea of the, the location of creativity is something that's like it's such a powerful um, it's such a powerful delusion I think for, for, for artists is, is this idea of, of the genius the artist mm -hmm. genius you know, that it's something that can be a big trap I think it's I think it's worth it's just worth talking about because sure. it's something that I think is, is helpful uh, for people to hear about and to yeah. contemplate on you know that you have to be a genius in order to be this avant-garde style I th well, I th boundaries, artist. well, no, I th think what I'm getting at is this notion of the genius, the artist being um, in possession of, of genius. Oh, okay, Do you know right. what I mean? Like yeah, the, yeah, the artist yeah. has genius. Yeah. The artist has genius and, and thereby is in control of that, that force. Yeah, okay. Do you know what I mean? And, and there's so many, yeah. so many problems come from that. So sure. many, like so much of the... Well, an attachment, right? It becomes an attachment. Yeah, it becomes an attachment because, it, but it's an, it's an illusion. It's a simple mistake. It's yeah. just a simple mistake of misperception of like, sure. it's like, you know, begin to think that you have creativity, you are, you are, you know, in possession of that and then you're responsible for it. Mm. And then you also like, when it's, when it's, when you're, when you're successful, mm. it's your own doing. Right? When, yeah. when you're not successful, when you can't come up with things, when you can't like be creative, then it's your problem. Then it's yeah. then it's your fault too. Yeah. So right. on both sides of the coin, it's, it creates suffering, I think, yeah. for artists, you know. And um, and it's a uh, it's just simply a misperception. It's just simply um, that we don't we don't see that that, that that creativity is in essence is 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 the whole is the essence of of the universe of. of we're, yeah. we're channeling this this force as artists. We can channel this force of creativity, which is which is actually the the, the manifest force of the goddess herself. You know, mm. it's it's like it's it's the creative force. It's the manifest world. Mm. That that's like it's no it's nothing short of that. It's nothing short mm. of that 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 creative power. And it's not power in the limited sense of of aggression or or. Or you know, like um, or or conflict, yeah. or, or personal will. Yeah, personal will. Yeah. But it is the will of the, of uh, it is a divine will. Sure. It is it is the divine will, and, and and because because the divine wants to it wants to manifest. Yeah. You know, it wants to it wants to create. And, yeah. And it's look at the, the amazing the amazing world we have around us. You know, That's very like, true. Yeah. And um, to be in alignment with that will. Yeah. And that's creativity. That that is like that is like the you know. Mm. That is to be in alignment with, with reality. Actually, it's nothing. It's nothing grandiose. It's nothing it's like. Simple, really. It's really simple. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really simple, and it's, and it's so beautiful in its, in, in its simplicity. And it's um. It's nothing short of abiding in reality. Right. It's just like yeah. it's, so, it's a, it's really it's 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 not abiding in delusion, but being in reality. And uh, sure. And you know because. Yeah, that's um, but it's something very attractive, I think, to people, especially when you achieve a certain level of success, mm. is to start to calcify a certain kind of conception of you know of the creative power that I have, mm. of what I can do in the what I can do with this. Mm what this can do for me, how this can reflect on, mm. on, on me. And, and, and these, are the, these are all the traps that an artist can fall, in, fall into, you know, and, and, and they're painful traps you know, in, in different ways. And, and we have to be very vigilant, I think, in, in terms of like how we're relating to that, to that force. You know? Are we using it for propaganda? Are we using it to, to reinsert a kind of a melancholia or a victim stance yeah. are we using it to um, you know for whatever reason find comfort in it find perhaps. comfort yeah. yeah find comfort yeah to and, and when we get into that position of, 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 of success are we then boundaring ourselves up from other people and separating ourselves right. you know it's yeah. just like yeah. 
Yeah. It's a fascinating thing, this, like, the, the creative process, mm. you know, and, uh, and I think we really have to look to those, to really understand, like, what's going on within ourselves, really, you know, we have to look to, like, how, how the universe creates, mm. and, and, and that's, for me, anyway, that's the role that Shaiva Tantra has, has played in, 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 in informing my own creative process and, and also my own experience, of course. And, you know, and there is this notion in, 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 in Shaivism and in many other traditions of Asia that there is like this sort of a triangle mm. of um, the, the creative force of the manifest world comes from these three forces mm. which, um, which are revered you know, as, as deities in certain traditions. And, and that's the, the force of the will, mm-hmm. the, force of action, the force of knowledge, and the force of action right and when you have those when those three are are, are operative you, you the manifest world comes into being yeah right. and um and we're not you know like you said we're not talking about like will in the sense of a limited world but this like that the, there is that the first thing that the, the universe <coughs> desi- has is there's just a desire the, the will and I, we can recognize that i yeah. think in our own creative process we can Definitely. recognize that right you have like yeah. that it's a name yeah, you yeah. have that just, that's the initial thing. You have that just a feeling. Yeah. Like you want to create something. And then, but then you need knowledge. You need, right. like, you know. And, and that's where I think yeah. some artists, like, you know, some pitfalls can come. If you don't have the right, yeah. the requisite skills. Sure. If you don't have the knowledge. If you don't, you need to, it needs to pass through. To come into being, it needs to pass through. <laughs> the, that will needs to pass through knowledge. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, and that's why. We have to cultivate skill. It's yep. you know very important. Ha- yeah. There has to be skill, yeah. and, and that's something also that a lot of in art school I didn't learn any skills actually. In fact, oh, really? cr- yeah. No. Yeah, right. craft was frowned upon. Right, craft okay. was seen as something inferior actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And um, all the the actual sculpture skills I learned um, just in my own time. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, you'd think that you go to art school to learn skills. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you don't. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Just what they want you to learn. Well, you learn. There are many things that, that can be learned right. in art school, but skill sure. is definitely not one of them. I okay. mean, it's an amazing, in you know, it's an amazing place for dialogue and interaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To form philosophy, philosophy. Yeah. philosophy. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, philosophy of the mind. Right. And, and it's an important distinction. Yeah. to make you know sure. it's, it's like the philosophy that you that you can learn in art school and in, 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 in university mm. is limited to 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 the to the mind's comprehension definitely you know yeah. what i mean like Dude. it's it's yeah. a, it's a it's funny because you know in art school there is this it's like you're given a kind of a Continental philosophy is a, sort of the religion, you know, of, 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 of contemporary art. And it's, uh, you know, now, now reflecting, having studied in, you know, different traditions in Asia. And, and uh, it's incredible to think, like, actually how limited that is. You know, mm. how, 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 also how those, you know, how, you know, whatever, Freud, Jung, Kant, they, they, they were limited in what they, mm. what they experienced. I mean, incredible, sure. incredible philosophers. Yeah. Not to like, you know. Yeah. But based on but, their own experiences, perhaps, and rather than, you know, any sort of broader understanding of what life may be. Yeah. Right, right. And, and um, it's just important, I think, to not see that as the cap. Right, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, and also to recognise that when we're learning philosophy um, and perhaps getting smarter, we're not necessarily affecting that that originating matrix of our being. Mm. You know, we're not necessarily working at that deeper level mm. um, and refining refining that deeper level. You know. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the um, 
then we have to bring things into action. When we have the will and, and we have the knowledge, then, then action will just happen. Mm. I think it's, it's not something that even needs to be... We, get, we jumble those a bit, those three, I think. Mm. Yeah. We jumble, yeah. confuse them a bit. Yeah. I certainly did. Yeah. It needs to be that alignment, though. There isn't that alignment. We can, we can, it can be very confusing. I think. Do you feel like the action is inspired by the knowledge and the, like the precepts to that? I where, think, where does the action come well, from? I th- well, action. If if, if it's is that something I'm struggling with at the moment is action. Oh, is it? So yeah. Okay. Good, good thing to talk about, yeah. Well, I think. Um, let's say. If it's coming from knowledge, it can come from knowledge, but it's, it, it, it can come through that, like, it, come, it can come from that layer of knowledge, right? Mm-hmm. But, but it, if it comes from that layer of knowledge, it's kind of like, you know, we're writing, you know, we can write a book or we can write a PhD that comes from that place and, mm-hmm. and we take action in doing that, we write. You know, but it can be it, it can be coming only from that superficial level. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's why there can be this sense of a struggle mm. when it comes from that from that level, not from the level of will. Sure. It can come from the level of will, though, and be coming from the level of like a conditioned will. That's also problematic too, because mm. then it's coming from like you know, uh, a, you know, a desire to prove oneself. Right. Or, yeah. But then, then again, actually, I have to say that, that that's probably coming from that space of not space from that second level. You know, it's it's coming from that level of conditioning, which is which is in the space of the mind, the, the story. It's within the storyland, you know, of who we think we should what right. we should be doing. Yeah. Um, but then, I think my experience is is that when those when there is that alignment. A- action when you have the knowledge when you have this when it, when it comes from a deeper will from from the will from an ultimate will uh, which is coming from firstly the, the, a surrender a surrender to, mm. to that yeah. there has to be that surrender if there's not that then it's, it's coming Definitely. from somewhere else yeah. so there has to be that surrender that's what defines that first right. you know space um, um, and if there is the knowledge I think sometimes the knowledge may not be like refined enough that you know our, our mm. ability to create our ability to write our ability to compose it might not be refined enough for action to to spit to to to, to move to to, to to spill forth mm. to just eventuate that's the process i think the process mm. of 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 acting then is just very very natural yeah um, and you know for me it's only been in the past like when I really took time out is when I started to cultivate my, my sculpture skills in a, in a very deep way. Mm. Uh, you know, I had certain skills, you know, I'd been, I'd worked as with casting and carving and different in 3D modeling for a while, but, um, mm. but uh, I really went very deep into just spending hours and hours and hours uh, 3D modeling. Right, okay. <laughs> you know, like years actually, sure. years. Yeah. And loving it. It's not like it didn't feel like, you know, yeah. I'm not, I didn't, you know, like have to push myself through it. I, right. I love it. Was it was a passion. I, it was, it's a passion. And it's very healing. It's actually very healing. For okay. me. It's like, yeah. it's, it's necessary now mm. for me to, to have that, like, to have that, there's sort of like, you know, I have sort of this, an intellect, um, an, uh, an intellectual ability and, and also like a, sort of an intuition and, and sometimes in the past those two things have been like sort of difficult for me to reconcile yeah, okay. um, yeah. so the 3D yeah. modeling the art process for me is very like um, it just those two things just come like fuse into one mm. thing it's very um, it's kind of, kind of an amazing thing and I think all artists I think have something that I think needs to be mm. healed in the process of creativity yeah that's this is like I've never seen an artist who doesn't have that yeah, that desire. Huge healing elements towards towards it, isn't it? Art yeah, I think there can be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think ultimately it, it, it is, if we could perceive it in that way for yeah. all artists, it is yeah. healing for us and healing for others. Yeah. 
a lot of artists have this feeling that I couldn't really do anything else and that's you know mm. it's sort of like the blessing and the curse of having like mm. some creative ability is that you, you actually can't do anything else you shouldn't be doing anything else mm. that's like you know it's to create is a, is a wonderful privilege and, and also can be a curse if it's if if that is not being exercised and if it's not being exercised in the appropriate manner mm. you know? sure. um, but um, yeah, so getting back to will and action, I think, and knowledge, and just, I think, I think, if I can just speak personally, it, it wasn't until I'd cultivated s skill mm -hmm. in my own time, mm -hmm. of my own free will, you know, without pressure, without being in a school, or mm -hmm. without, just because it's what I wanted to do, you know. Yeah. It wasn't until I had that freedom, and I developed a certain level of skill that I, that. The action was just really clear. Yeah, I think, I think it's perhaps the cultivation of um, of those two that needs to proceed. Yeah, it makes action. total sense, right? Yeah, reinforced yeah. by the greater will, and then that knowledge is like sort of the fine tuning of that, like the tuning fork to actually then resonate something into this yeah. plane of existence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's sort of just. It's just like what wants to happen. You know? sure. It's like, it's so natural. It's so yeah. natural if, um, if there is a degree of refinement of the will, it's so natural that sort of the action just takes place. You know? mm -hmm. um, yeah. Some people, you know, are acting all the time and creating all the time and manifesting all the time. and. You know, and there's a lot of stuff that's made, but it's not always coming from a place of wisdom and place of knowledge. You know? That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think we all recognize that. We can see that intuitively. Yeah. It hurts, actually. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, there's an underlying hurt there, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. But do you think there's like a, uh, <clears throat> a greater, it feels like to me at least, anyway, there's this greater need for something that is more in its truth and more in its authenticity as far as what we're creating and what we're, what we're doing. Like, I, perhaps it's just the friends that I'm surrounded by yeah. with now, but, you know, that's a context that I have. But, like, there just seems to be... I mean, I, I feel like it's got... It's different aspects around the world where people are having these same sort of conversations that you and I are having now of mm. what is it that we're doing? Like, what are we creating? Is this, is this in harmony with our nature or is it something that goes against it you know and at, at the moment it feels like over the last few years we've sort of taken a step back and questioning it at least for the first time in this western society framework that we have yeah you know i wonder i wonder it's just like what i said before i wonder whether it is something that's actually happening or whether we're just becoming you know more aware of it you yeah. know and uh just by talking about it and then other people hearing about it they're becoming aware of it too and you know like I mean certainly that's what I perceive yeah that there is like um, incredible potential for change there's also <clears throat> incredible darkness at the same mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. you know yeah so you know and I don't know whether it's whether it's something that I'm just seeing for the first time because I have the eyes to see it or, yeah. or whether it's something that's, I, I mean, we can't, yeah, I couldn't objectively say that it's happening, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but that darkness is a gift though to be able to understand to and become aware of it as well. Like I think that's a important part of absolutely. who we are as this entity is to understand and not just block ourselves away from one or the other. Yeah. To hold both. Of course in a yeah. straightforward dichotomy that that may be. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so a large part of our religions and some spiritual philosophies are also by sort of pushing away the, the darkness or the evil. And, well, yeah, know. that's it. That's it. We must, as artists, bring the light and not curse the darkness. That's, yeah. that's what my, one of my meditation teachers told me that. It's really yeah. resonates with me every day, you know. Yeah. Um, and... Um, 
you know, it depends on your spiritual path too. It's, it depends yeah, on, on where you want to go that's as true. well, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not, like point. you say, yeah. like some paths are renunciate paths. Sure. Some paths renounce. We, 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 some people, I think, are naturally inclined towards that way of life. I don't think yeah. many people are. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of confusion that can happen from, you know, people perceiving meditation and yoga from the outside and... And um, there's still a lot of confusion, I think, that, yeah, for sure. that, that there is like that yoga and meditation is synonymous with renouncing the world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and renouncing yourself. Renouncing even. yourself and, yeah. and, you know, like this bag of pus, you know, yeah. like, you know, like it's not exactly. like that. It's not like that. In Shaiva Tantra, it's not like that. The body is divine. It's, it's about accepting. Like, to me, that's what it feels like. It's about accepting all and lots of you, the good and the bad. Right. I mean, yeah. Your body, I don't know. In, 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 your mind. Yes, yes. I mean, some traditions would say no, but I certainly don't follow that. I, I just don't feel like uh, that's something that um, is not in alignment with the way I, I can perceive the reality. But yeah, it's just certainly acceptance is, is, is crucial mm. to moving forward. We, have, we must have. Before, any, before we really, like, I think, begin any kind of serious spiritual practice, there needs to be self-acceptance as a base. Yeah. That's basic sanity. That it is. is Chogyan Trukpa. Right, okay. Basic sanity. It's basic sanity is to have that level of, you know, of a self-acceptance. Um, right. But, um, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting to... Have you been through that phase of, like, sort of renouncing the world? Because I, I certainly have. Yeah, yeah. I think, I, I think I think you sort of need to like you need yeah. to understand that as well. And yes. And just to come back and realize that it's all it's all you anyway. <laughs> but there is that, that. It's like the teenage rebellious stage in a in a spiritual yeah in your, in your spiritual uh, aspect of your life. I think is that renouncing. I mean, I've had many I've, friends that have gone like the full gamut with it, including renouncing their name and. You know, mm -hmm. really renouncing all aspects of themselves, and, and I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. To me, that doesn't seem like we're just going back and forth, like about accepting oneself. And um, but I understand it too. I understand it from their point right. of view, like why they yeah. do that. And, yeah. um, and I think maybe we just do it to the varying degrees that we need to in order to move forward. Perhaps. You know, yeah. 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 Certainly. Certainly. Yeah. It was. It did. Definitely didn't feel for me. It did feel for me like a necessary step yeah you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not there now but you know it certainly felt like you know there was because you start to see the world for the way it is right and you think this is I've been taught I've told a lie for all my life now I'm starting to see the world for what it is it's crazy <laughs> fucked up place and you're like you want to yeah. sort of like go Ugh, get away from me like I, I, yeah. I just want to be in my truth now and I want to be in my life, <laughs> and you're not you're not in my truth or my life. But yeah, it is in yeah, your yeah. truth. In your life. Everything around course, you yeah. is just a projection of what's what's inside. So um, yeah, yeah. It's, but there's that initial thing of like, oh, that's that's it's all a bit gross. That's it. it <laughs> I mean, it's really it's one of the two traps that I think are the traps of spirituality. And one of them is this: it's a transcendentalism. Actually, it's yeah. transcendental. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's it's, it's uh, valuing the unseen over the scene right. you know, it's, it's thinking also that there is like a something greater yeah. that there is a greater truth that isn't here right now in, sure. this, in this body in this world and uh, yeah. and it's funny it leads to all kinds of like diets and I mean, for me you know it led to all kinds of like you know it has its own way of it's, it's its own world you know for sure yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's, it can be a trap it can be trapped because it basically it does it does sort of bring you the end point, I mean, what we really, what you really strive towards at the end of that, you know, to going further and further down that path is to actually let go of the world. Right. You, know, you yeah. give signals to your body and brain to live. Yeah. Yeah. You know, actually. Yeah. Right. Right. At the, at the end. You know, at the yeah. at the further end of that. Sure. Yeah. You start to dry out, die. Right. If you go too far, yeah, <laughs> you, know, yeah. you get what you want. That's the thing. That's the amazing thing about this body and this mind. Right? Yeah, I know, right. Whatever you want, you yeah, can have it. Exactly. There's if that you want to leave, be careful what you wish for. Yeah, though, if right? you want to leave, you can yeah. leave. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, we we it's unique this human experience. The fact that we're aware of ourselves and aware of this place in the universe and have the ability to do what we do, it is a unique thing. It's a real gift and a blessing but sometimes people are really burdened by it as well 
you know, and uh, that's sort of an unfortunate thing, but you know, it's that that's just that part of that person's life, I guess, and then something that they hopefully will move through or, or burdened burdened by the responsibility of, of life. You exactly. Know? Yeah. Wow. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, and also the attachment that we have that yeah. comes through like we we are attached to life. You know, we are attached to this thing right. called life, which. I guess it's necessary from an ego point of view to keep us alive, to you know make sure we feed ourselves and drink water and look after our bodies and things like so we can can we can live. Um, but that our idea of attachment, we I feel like we're just intrinsically attached anyway. So it's how how much yeah. awareness you can bring to that. Intrinsically attached, I guess, to life. Yeah, to 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 the will to live. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. The funny thing is, though, that we're not really. We're not truly living until we let go of that. Right. It's an amazing thing, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I feel like, you know, having some sort of crises can really assist in that, in that awakening. Or it, it's almost necessary. And I mean, it could be a crisis in your life. It could be a crisis that you encounter in a uh, plant medicine ceremony or after doing a 10-day vinyasana or something like yeah. that, you know, like... It, it, there's that you know well that's why in a lot of cultures leading up to today and still many practice it as some sort of initiation or something like that where you yeah. undergo some crisis and it, and it gives you a, a, a different perspective on, on yourself and yeah. the world and it's something that we sorely lack in our society is that you know a lot of our crises are covered up by perhaps pharmaceuticals or whatever it may be yes. rather than going through and understanding okay well there's a reason for this and Let's yeah. let's look at it. Let's let's embrace it even and kiss it on its forehead and watch it evaporate. You know. Yeah, yeah. No, it's um, we don't have those um, we don't have those sort of those initiations and that as a culture here anyway. Like it, mm. We don't we don't see. You're right. That kind of process of dissolution, that crisis, as as a necessary step mm. but it's it's for each each person to discover like why and how and, yeah. and part of like the the part of the fact that we feel so alone in those times is mm. you know gives up I don't know that it's a warrior's journey right yeah, yeah. it's there's something to that too something to that isolation yeah like the product was something to turn into oneself yeah you, know? you can't see the light you know you see the light is just so bright when you see it mm. you know, when it's when you're surrounded by darkness I mean you go mm. through that dark night of the soul and, um, and you see the, and you see truth no matter how like you know how or how wide the lens is for perceiving mm. that it's like um I guess it's only perceptible by what, because of what surrounds it in a certain way. Mm, um, yeah. We could certainly get better at, at uh, helping people through that process, for yeah. sure. You yeah. know, there are incredible traditions for doing that. And that's, I think, the role of the teacher, the role of initiation, the role of, you know, of these, um, these spiritual tr traditions, which is just seem so incredibly um, refined. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And helpful. Yeah. And, and steeped in uh, case evidence as well. You know? That's like it. There's, yeah, right. There's such a plethora there's... of like knowledge around its ability to actually work that right. you know, we'd be silly not to listen to it or take a look at it. Yeah. 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 There's something you said before that I wanted to circle back to. I can't remember. It's really wonderful to talk with you and to talk like with someone who really like you know has obviously been through like is on a sort of you know on a path. It's like it's not everyone mm. I can talk to you know yeah. in uh, not even all my artist friends. You know, sure. Might not be able to um, get it. It's funny to think of like the things that come out of my mouth these days sometimes. You know? Yeah, I, know, I right? would never have, when I when I think back to myself in art school and. Yeah. I, I had a funny meeting uh, actually in New York last time when I was there. I, I, I bumped into um, 
I bumped into someone just randomly in the street. Um, and she was like, oh, hi, Christian. You know, I was like, uh, and, and I said, hi, hi, how are you? And she was like, um, I, I saw you're into yoga now. I was like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a big part of my life now. She's like, you know, because you were like, you wouldn't even say hi to me in the hallways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, wow, yeah, sort of you know, brought me back to like, uh, to the attitudes that I was holding at that time. Yeah. yeah. It is interesting to reflect back upon and, it, and it's good to reflect back upon as well sort of the life as it was and how far you've come, especially on, I try to do on days when I'm feeling down about myself or I'm just like not happy with where I'm at in life or what I'm doing in the present moment and then it's good just to take a moment just to reflect back, well hang on, let's consider where I was five years ago, where I was six years ago and the strides I've made in my right. well-being and happiness and my ability to help others as well. and. Uh, it is a good thing to remember. Yeah, it's important to take stock. It is, yeah. 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 To see that there is, and also to validate, like, you know, the, the practice, to see that, yeah. you know, transformation is occurring. It is. Transformation is possible. Yeah. That the, the tools actually are there and they work. Yep. Definitely. And it's like, you know. Yeah. And it's a never ending process. It's not like we reach some, some end point and no. it's all done, but it's like, but That's another good. trap that occurs though too. Definitely. You get sort of told Definitely. if you do this and you do that and you come to my thing and pay this money that you will attain yeah. this and then your life is going to be amazing. Right. The, the temptation is to think of the spiritual life as coming to an end point. And yeah. it's like, it's just like, doesn't, that's not the way reality is, is no. it? It's like you get to this. But know, those who have commodified the spiritual realm do do that though. They do say, this is what you need to do and that yeah if you once you start and then you if you do get into that it might be fine but then you realize hang on this isn't the end to it this is still more there's another layer and another layer yeah i mean it's it's it is the it's a never-ending process because that's what that's what reality is it's, it's yeah. a never-ending process of, of dissolution and manifestation so how could there be an end point to exactly. that how could there and terence mccann describes complexity as well what, yeah. in, what, in what way? Uh, as the universe evolves and ages, it grows. Complex, his theory is that complexity also develops further and further. That time is speeding up. That the moments within time. So not don't use moment as a as a reference to time, but the moments within time, the experiences within time are speeding up as well. So yeah, yeah. So then, of course, by by nature, that you would have to also move that as well. Yeah, that's interesting. I've never heard that theory yeah it's interesting it's good to talk about the traps i think it's uh, the other one is the, the the materialist trap i don't know if mm. like, it's something I, i've definitely fallen into the transcendental trap but mm. there's materialist i don't know i haven't gone there not yet anyway i think it's because i had such an aversion you know mm. to the to the um to spirituality that i yeah. just I couldn't really but yeah. Shogun Trimpa talks about spiritual materialism, which I think is such a great word. It's like, mm. and what's his of, reference around that? It's it's basically like that. Uh, we can just use sp spirituality as another way to adorn our identity. To, okay. To, we can just create. We just that we have these patterns, you know, that are rolling around in our, in our, in our, in our awareness of, of trying to attach to different kind of identities and. Um, um, and we use spirituality as just another way to to create an identity. Right. You know, and, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's tempting because it's like these habits are within us, but yeah. You know, of course, the spiritual process is is the antithesis of that. So, sure. Um, but it's interesting. To, yeah. I don't know. I guess I should never say never, but it's an interesting one to contemplate for sure. Like, yeah. Know, how do we use our spirituality? Are we really being truthful? Mm -hmm in our process and you know, it can be so subtle it can be so subtle that like that will to create that will to the desire to to just have spirituality be another little thing that can make mm. us better yeah so, you know. for sure yeah definitely exactly. you know what I mean yeah I do know what you mean <laughs> yeah I mean because it can, can be comforting at first and you have little respites yeah. but uh, you soon understand it's not fulfilling perhaps it's not yeah. sustainable yeah yeah and also it's it's just in become it can be an impediment 
Right. It's just like anything else. Any other kind of thing that we're holding to is exactly. defining us. It just becomes a shackle. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Including spirituality itself. Including right? spirituality itself. Yeah. yeah. I feel there's something, like something I'm starting to go through at the moment. I'm starting to become really aware of that. Of like that. Yeah, because there's this idea that a spiritual practice or a spiritual way of living is like is what you want to attain is that that's where you want to get to but now i'm starting to realize oh hang on this is also that's also limiting you know like it has a set of has a framework and a set of lessons that can really help to grow me as a human being but it's also i've, I've started in, in the way in the same way like i had this aversion to spirituality in the past and then mm. i was very in a material world mm. but i always had that inkling there was a something there that there's i needed to go in that direction of the spiritual understanding i knew i'm having that again but like away from the spiritual again so it's like going through it feels like it's going through a cycle mm. or like a layer that i'm i know there's something else out there that i need to investigate that's mm. beyond the, the spiritual as well i don't know oh, what that is i think we just have to always keep in mind that the spiritual path and the, the things we learn are really they're just tools for our liberation exactly. they're, they're just tools, tools. they're tools to, to, we just you know to get us free yeah to, yeah they're just they're just tools they're beautiful tools yeah beautiful traditions definitely that, yeah. you know we, we must have reverence and respect for them. exactly but they are just yeah 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 but not pointers and tools or... right right you know and it's also tempting too because there's yeah, to mistake the especially for our minds too, for our I love reading about, you know, the spiritual traditions. I love learning about it and um <clears throat> something also that I think needs to be kept in mind that that's somehow has, has really very little to do with our spiritual growth or attainment sometimes. It's mm. like the knowledge is good and it's in a sense it's sort of, sort of like fascinating you know mm-hmm. and in a certain way it's kind of like a hobby for me and it's, it definitely supports my yeah. work and everything but it's not yeah it's not the um, it's not the be all be all and end all of the process um, sure seems like you've got a good um, balance with it like in the way you live your life and the way you create as well is also your philosophy around life it's not you're not wrapped up in any one thing you're, you're very much the observed to it all well, i so feel like becoming more and more i've i mean i feel like i'm in the i've had wonderful teachers you know mm. who i'm very grateful for and i continue to learn from them and sure. um you know um and i'm very grateful that i've been able to have the space and time to in- integrate my my artwork mm. my life my relationships mm. you know and, and that my artwork is my sadhana you know it's it's my it's mm. the way i live it's also my spiritual practice mm-hmm. it's you know it's it's all sort of it's one organic process mm. you know for me now yeah but it's it takes it's taken time it hasn't always been like that it takes time to integrate right? yeah so, yeah I mean that's yeah. i think what yoga is all about it's right it is integration yeah it is isn't it it's like yeah. without that what is it yeah what is it yeah. actually yeah i mean certainly for me the my yogic practice from sort of two yeah 2013 it was 2012 2013 i don't have practiced much since having a newborn <laughs> it's uh, time yeah. becomes a little bit more limiting but that whole patience. time yeah well yeah, yeah exactly yeah <laughs> it brings on something else but um yeah. yeah it was such a huge part of my integration you know i, I went into mm. the plant medicine realm yeah. dived into that for two or three years in, in different parts of the world and with different lineages and if it wasn't for my yoga practice I would have gone way off the deep end I think like you know I would have like, I was very fortunate to have a really solid group of people around me as well group of friends and um, but the yoga practice was always that one thing I could come back to yeah. just to be just to just to cultivate or like to bring in it's, it's hard to, for me to put into words but like just to really shape myself into the and integrate and shape myself into the person that I knew mm. I could become mm. and um, yeah it was just such a um, both on a, on a physical 
in a physical way, mental, emotional, and spiritual. You know, it's yeah. a really important aspect of, of my life. And and you, and you never hear anyone have a yoga practice and go, yeah, my life just seems worse than what it was. <laughs> like, it's so true. You know, it's it's like, so true. Yeah, life's pretty good. It's getting, you know, enjoy, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's always good. varying degrees of better. Exactly. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then there's a, there's a feeling of uh, missing as well, like where people go through stages where they're not practicing. I'm certainly going through it now, and then when I come back to it, it's like this, oh, such an amazing feeling, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah, I think it's something that I'm glad it's becoming uh, a greater part of our Western society. You know, yeah, no, it's a, it's a very fascinating process, isn't it? The introduction of yoga into the West mm. and the way it's all interfacing with the real traditions. And, For sure. I mean, there's a lot of confusion there too, but uh, but it's it's good. It's ultimately good, isn't it? I mean, it's uh, um, it's incredible how popular it is. Yeah. I mean, in a commercial sense. Um, For sure. But there's a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of confusion as to like how deep it goes, I think. And, I get, yeah. Don't you think? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I haven't delved too much into the philosophy of yoga, so I, yeah. um, I probably I couldn't really state, but yeah, yeah, I think that's something you've obviously been really into and you yeah. need to understand, I think, but yeah. yeah. For, from what I can perceive, yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, for sure but yeah. it's, it's like what we said before, it's like you, there's a certain, it, you know, there are a lot of people who are like, oh, you know, commercial yoga is just like, it's not yoga. Mm. I think that it's, my experience of it anyway, is that there can be tastes of, you know, that yeah. even in like, you know, a commercial yoga studio, there can be tastes of the, the deeper traditions that support that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And if it gets people interested, then I think it's great. Like, yeah, because it's a bare a, minimum, it's, it's great for your body. It, as a bare <laughs> minimum, yeah, yeah, just to stretch it's, and, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, it is great. You know, there's like, uh, you know, on that, there's, you know, a lot of judgment around different um, yoga schools that have hip hop music during the class and things like that. And I actually don't mind that. I mean, I love hip hop, so it's not so bad. Yeah. But, you know, I, I can understand though why people that, especially from the traditional aspects of yoga, would, would say that's not quite right. But yeah, I mean, I think as long as the underlying intention behind why they're doing that is for good, then, you know, <laughs> It, it should be a good thing. Yeah, hard to say. It is hard, hard to say. To say. I, hard I don't to know say. if I want, you know, I don't know if I'd want that sort of a narrative blasting into my ears while I'm, you know, it depends. Like, what do you yeah. do? Yeah, it's important. It's important to to recognize what we're digesting. It is, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Like, in all ways, through our, through our, you know, our ears and through our, through our minds and through it visually too and all yeah. the senses I think that's something that's that kind of an understanding of like what are we eating is, yeah. is something that like is is not really talked about that much no. actually you know it's like what, yeah. are, what are we actually digesting you know, yeah. in the music that we hear yeah. in the art that we see and we make like what are we what are we actually making as as food sure like? it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a form of nourishment and what are we what are we cooking and what yeah. are we eating so you're talking it's about so, cultivating awareness of that. Yeah, I think it's just so important. I think yeah. it's really important because, um, because it's it's sort of like until we really like there can be a lack of sensitivity to 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 like what we're bringing into our awareness and what we're telling to ourselves, mm. and, and and it comes through. You know what? It's like just think we have to be aware of of what we're eating. Just like you know, in a, in a real literal sense, what are we eating? Mm. And it, and what are we eating with our ears? What are we listening to? What mm. are we what are we what are we looking at? And what are, what is being said to us really when we mm. when we see works of art and what it's like? You know. Yeah. How we really, yeah, and because make it that all, a practice as well. Absolutely, make that thing a practice in your life. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I certainly think it's something that's lacking in um, in the contemporary art world. Like, um, I just keep coming back to that because that's sort of the world mm. that I've you know, sure. I've I've moved in. Mm. But um, there is um, there's sort of like a lack of awareness of the deeper narratives that are being 
broadcast, I think. Um, and um, I think just your, your comment about the hip hop made me just think of that. You know, it's like, I just wonder, I was just wondering about what, what the equivalent is in the, in, in the art world and you know, what kind of, what kind of noise do you have to contend for? Of course, they're amazing, like, you know, they're amazing hip hop artists who really talk about the eternal. As sure. Well. You yeah, know, of it's, course, it's not yeah. to like, but. Yeah, it's definitely a broad spectrum in hip hop. Yeah. yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. There's also like, there's a, yeah. But you would but, say it's just in the same in the art world as well? I think so, yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, in the art world too, there are those yeah. artists who've recognized the eternal. In, in their life and in their work. Yeah. And those artists are incredible examples of, yeah. of a human potential. And well, we're talking about Alex Gray before the podcast. Yeah. And for me, that, that's someone who's really, he's communicating something. That's why I feel like something that is deeply helpful to those who come across his artwork. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not like super familiar with his work, um, but I just um, I know it speaks to a lot of people. Mm. There's something though that in that work that it's sort of like um, there is a way that it mixes tradition with sub the the sort of the objectivity of tradition and the subjectivity of self-expression, mm. which like when I see it, I f I feel a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, with yeah. It. You know, like I know, I know he's made an incredible contribution. I, I don't yeah. want to put him down. And, uh, but, I know exactly what you mean. Though. But do you know what I mean? Yeah, there is yeah. the language of um, he uses the language of tradition. Yep. But there is also self-expression, and, yeah. and really, if we look to these traditions which he references mm. um, of sacred art, these are really about the dissolution of self-expression. Right. Self-expression has no place. Sure. Know? Yeah. Because that's really like what the process and the result is designed to do. Mm. Mm. Really, it's it's to bring us from that limited will into the greater will. Right. And, uh, you know. Um, so that's um, where was I going with that I was thinking about yeah about sacred art and yeah self-expression self-expression mm. versus the resting but um, yeah there's a there's a mixing there's a mixing of this of, of the of the subjective self expression and, and the objective role. Oh, that's where I was I was thinking is that we have to be really I think careful too of a, of appropriation cultural appropriation mm. you know and that's something that I've been you know I've thought about it a lot and you know even like even Indian artists can appreciate can appropriate their own tradition. Do you right, know what I mean? okay, we need sure, to be really yeah. clear about like yeah. why we're doing it and where it's coming from and you know yeah. um, it's not it's not helpful I don't think to cultural cultural appropriation is something we have to be really mm -hmm. mindful of you know? mm -hmm. and that's why that's why I've gone you know I've gone and studied with, with artists and, and I've, I've had initiations into practices and it's not for me this sacred art that I'm doing mm -hmm. now is not it's not something coming from my, my mind it's not it's also not like it's something that it's very sincere right do you know what I yeah, mean like yeah. I'm not I'm not making a comment sure I'm not sure. making cultural commentary this is yeah. like real yeah. I, I don't know if people get that I don't, I don't really mind it's not like but you it's mean very, like a very, style like absolutely yeah, not yeah. it's not a cultural it's not appropriation I'm not yeah. re, I'm not remixing right. in fact I'm trying my very utmost to be very faithful yeah to yeah. the tradition uh, in, in you know to the, to the best yeah. ability that I can and there's a beauty within that Really there is. Yeah. And it's not a, well, it's not an external too. beauty. Yeah, maybe I, I hope it manifests externally, but really yeah. like if those if that sort of like and I think that's really important too to talk about too. It's like where where is like how is beauty what is beauty and how is it manifest? And I think if it mm. I think really like beauty is just an emergent property. You know? Yeah. It's just like an emergent property of virtue. If there is like a certain if we have virtue, if we move from that place of virtue and also if we Beauty just sort of automatically emerges yeah. from that space of, yeah. of, of integrity. Totally, you know? it's totally, like, definitely. It's not something, you know, but 
it's not something necessarily that we have to strive for. That's a funny thing. Yeah, you think we have to make pictures of puppies and flowers and stuff because that's beautiful. <laughs> sure, sure. Or whatever, or sunsets. You know, but but yeah. beauty really comes from like what's inherent within. You yeah. Know, and, and, uh, well, it's our nature. Right? We, it's our nature. We are these creatures of beauty within our nature. You know. Yeah. I mean, even from a, a go, going back to the golden, I think of the golden mean, you know, the yeah. golden ratio. We are built to this mathematical formula of what we whatever we see within ourselves is this beautiful rectangle that's that's a perfection of beauty and aesthetically pleasing but we are of that the trees you know these trees that are here follow the fibonacci sequence you know they're all our right. nature is beautiful and when we yeah when we can create and cultivate from that emergent aspect mm. that is that is beauty when we have that in mind when we have that awareness yeah yeah proportion you know, that's it goes back to the whole thing of art in in proportion you know how, how important that is in you know in design and, and yeah art and creating. yeah yeah it's um i think also that the just being aware of the values that we hold when we when we create things is really important you know it's like mm. i think invariably as artists we construct rules you know and either it's the rules, either we look to the rules of a tradition or we construct our own rules. And those rules are, are they're informed by values. And um, sometimes we're not so aware of what the values mm. actually are that we hold and how those inform like, you know, the, the, the rules that we make and the, the actions yeah, that we take. Good point. So it's, yeah. It's super important to become aware of it. what is it yeah. what do you what do you value yeah what is valuable what yeah. do you what are your values you know what are your yeah. yeah and it's sometimes hard to even say but it's i think it's important to articulate it's important to really think about and to to be honest with yeah because i think a lot of the time if you're really honest too and you really see your values for what they are mm. if there are values that are out of alignment you'll begin to see them and mm. that's important it's important to yeah, and be fearless now. I think too. fearless, yeah. right? Yeah. Honest and fearless. Yeah. And like, okay, yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. You might come exactly. across some stuff about yourself and the way you view the world that's not so great, you know. But then you know, it's rather than shy away from it, sort of just again be fearless into it and understand. Yeah, that. that's just see it for what it is. See it for what it is. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. No, most definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well, Christian, it's been an amazing chat. <laughs> Thanks so much. Covered for some amazing ground there. Me in. Yeah. Oh, I'm so grateful that you uh, agreed to do this podcast. So I've spoken to many friends about this that I'm going to be doing and how <laughs> long I've wanted to do this podcast since literally the first time I saw a picture of this and I realized that you were uh, a Perth boy and, and that you were around. So I thought, uh, yeah, three years on, did you say? Yeah. Well, yeah, about, it's yeah. great to be able to do it. So, and also to be able to have the. Um, the conversation that we did around not just about this is an installation and, and what it's about go deeper into the, like what it is to be a human being i think that's what's great about these long form interviews and these long form podcasts that you really wouldn't have been able to express too much previously in uh shorter style interviews that we would have done especially for newspapers absolutely you know you can go a bit more in depth about your philosophies and how they've helped you and then how they may be able to help other people as well so i think that's what's great about these podcasts and i've certainly got great benefit out of in the past from other people's uh interviews and etc and i hope just to pay it forward a little bit <laughs> with doing this so yeah. yeah i really appreciate you being a part of that and, and doing this so, oh thanks Adrian. Yeah. it's just it's been a really it's been such a pleasure to talk with you Likewise. you know it's as you said like in, in other interviews and in other mediums, this stuff just doesn't come out. Yeah. You know, so it's a real, it's a real blessing to be able to have that forum, to be able to talk yeah. about this stuff that's super important and, uh, and valuable, I hope, to yeah. people hearing it, you know, so. It will be, exactly, it yeah. will be. And uh, yeah, it's one of the great aspects of, aspects of technology that we have now is it's so, we have this freedom to uh, share and, and yeah. uh, freedom to listen as well, which, we were sort of dictated to we, we're of that age we sort of remember what it was like where we were our, our the what we um consumed was very much dictated upon us but now mm. we seem to have more choice well i don't know we feel like we have more we choice like maybe, we do. maybe we don't know maybe we don't uh but that's uh, that's something that we can only yeah actually get sick of thinking about it doesn't it but like it's only something that we can really 
work at ourselves is yeah. what are we consuming and um, what are, and what are we creating as well? I think yeah. that's a big part of this this podcast, yeah. which was good. So. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, um, how can people get a hold of you? Or they can what can contact they... me via my website. Yep, and yeah. that's... Uh... Just my full name, dot com. Okay, yeah. Christian, Christian Diviatri. Yep. Dot com. Okay, and uh, go there, check it out. I'll put a link up underneath as well, so you can have a look. And uh, you're on Instagram as well. Yeah, that's how they can you connect are, with me there. Yeah. 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 So good though your Instagram these days. I'm starting to enjoy it. More. Yeah, I've, I was. Uh, I I didn't do it for a while. I've only just yeah. started doing it for like the last month or so. Oh, okay, the last really? couple of months. Okay. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Good. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really like. I sort of shunned it for a while. I didn't. Yeah. You know, I just didn't want to like. Uh, I needed to take time out. Yeah, but yeah, enough. I'm starting to get more active. I'm enjoying the process. Sure. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's interesting. It's an interesting uh, um, thing. Instagram is and. Uh, yeah, like a lot of these social media platforms that we have. So, yeah, yeah it's how we use it, of course, is, is a big part of it. But um, right, right. I, I like what you're doing. And uh, yeah, oh, thanks, thanks for uh, putting your stuff out there. It's fantastic. <laughs> and uh, also, we've got to thank the Revly as well. We're at the Absolutely. Revly, so yeah. They yeah. very kind to let us record us here. Yeah, we did it's have a beautiful few, space. It is, yeah, it is yeah. great. And I mean, yeah. just an amazing view, obviously, over Elizabeth Key and, uh, and the city. And um, yeah. yeah, it's been great to, to be here. So. Thank you to them, and uh, yeah, thank you again, Christian. And uh, hopefully, we can do this again one day. Let's do it again uh, when I'm back in town. Yeah, yeah. it'd be fantastic. Or um, yeah, it's a great thing about Skype as well these days. Oh, we're getting the outro as well. Oh right there. yeah, there we go. Perfect, <laughs> Perfect timing. Perfect yeah. timing. And uh, yeah, and thank you very much to everyone <laughs> that uh, is uh, watching this. And uh, we'll go out to some, just not Laura Hill, or uh, probably not. Uh, yeah, some it's, it's good. It's perfect. R&D. It sounds just perfect. It's good, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, thanks very much, Christian. Really yeah. appreciate it. And uh, to everyone else, thanks for watching. And any questions, please let us know. Um, yeah, we'll see you next time. Yeah. Bye.